This episode is brought to you by Marantz Model 40N, ISA's Smart Amplifier of the Year. The most musical sound simplified. Today we're going to talk about a pair of speakers. And I don't even need to tell you what they're called. You've seen them behind me in the last, what, three, four videos. And their name and the model number is written right across the front baffle. Yep, today we're going to talk about the Mission 770, the new version. The original version was designed by a chap called Farad Azima, who founded Mission, I think, in 77. He released the original 770 in 78. <laughs> There's a lot of sevens there. And it was, I guess it was kind of groundbreaking for its time, because apparently it was the first loudspeaker to feature a mid-bass driver made from polypropylene. Now, Mission had long since been sold to its current owners, the Chinese company IAG, by the time Azima passed away in 2020. And that same year, Mission's current head of product design, product development, Peter Como, started work on what I'm calling, he didn't say this, what I'm calling a tribute edition. So basically a new version of the 770, and that's what I have behind me here. So this new version would be a fresh take on the 770, and obviously it would have to look pretty damn close to the original. But in terms of sound quality, Como had, the way I see it, quite a tricky job, because he wanted to improve them, but also he couldn't stray too far from the original sound. So he had to kind of walk a fairly fine line. And so that meant, once again, polypropylene for the mid-bass driver. But this time out, it has been strengthened by mica and marble, which has been ground to a fine dust and then added to the polypropylene mix before the driver is molded. So that apparently adds greater rigidity to the driver. And according to Como, that gives the, the driver a better, a better bass response. And I say according to Como because I interviewed him a few weeks back for the Darko Audio podcast. If you want to listen to that, the link is in the description box below. And in that podcast, Como tells us that the new tweeter, the 2.8 centimeter tweeter, is a doped microfiber dome. It is not really anything to do with the plastic CS original. And also, it has a rear chamber. And that rear chamber is designed primarily to drive down the resonant frequency of the driver below the crossover point. The cabinet, the cabinet. This is no thin-walled Harbeth loudspeaker. The cabinet walls here are thick. They are made of a dual layer of particle board and MDF. According to Como, that really helps with the sound quality of the loudspeaker. And yeah, this is a heavy speaker. You can tell that, that those walls are thick because it's a heavy speaker. I think each one weighs 20 kilos. Oh, I almost forgot. The particle board and the MDF, they're glued together with a resonance damping glue. The front firing port has been flared at each end. So it's a tube like this and it flares out at each end. Now that's done to reduce turbulence according to, well, according to Como, but according to a lot of loudspeaker designers that I've spoken to over the years. But of course, just above that port, it says Mission 770. You can't miss it. Now I think this is going to upset some people and it's going to really yeah, excite others. I, I think it's great. I love having the, the name and the, the brand on the front of the speaker. If you don't like it, there is a pair of magnetically attachable grills, but I think they make the speaker look a lot more, I don't know, I guess they look a bit boring with the grills on. I really love, 
I love the aesthetics of these, I really do even with Mission 770 across the front. Each pair of 770 comes with a pair of steel stands. Yes, we have to build them. Yes, we only have to do that once. So people that complain about that, I don't know, man. Like, I mean, it's gonna increase the, the box size if they're pre-built, which is gonna increase the shipping size and therefore maybe the shipping cost. Anyway, the steel stands are plain, but they're heavy, they do the job, they look smart, they don't, they don't stand out. They're just plain black steel stands. I mean, I'm glad that Mission provide them because getting a pair to fit these otherwise from a third party, I think would be pretty tricky. 88 dB sensitive, eight ohm nominal, six ohm minimum. Those are the, the rough specs of the 770, which means they'll be a fairly easy drive for most amplifiers. You don't need a lot of power here. I use the 770 over the last four or five weeks with four different amps. I've used the Hegel H590, I've used the Mola Mola Cooler, I've used the Audio Lab 6000A Play, and then most recently this week, I've settled on the name Unity Atom, mainly because the Unity Atom is more price appropriate. Let's talk about sound quality by using side-by-side -side comparisons. When I say side-by-side -side comparisons, I don't mean I put this one speaker immediately next to this other speaker and listen to them back to back. It means that I have them both or all of them here at the same time. Side-by-side -side really means at the same time. Now the 770 are not the airiest sounding speakers I've ever heard. There's a bit of a treble roll off. They certainly are not as airy or as detailed in the top end as something like the Kaya S12 from Vivid Audio. Those Vivid speakers, they spray detail into the room like a fine mist, and the 770 don't do that. The imaging between the speakers, that means the sort of player placement on the soundstage, isn't quite as pinpoint accurate as it is with smaller two-way loudspeakers. And that's as true for a really expensive one like the Wilson Audio Tune Tot and a more affordable one like the Kef LS50 Meta. I have both here. Bit of an amplifier side note here. For me, with these speakers, the macro dynamic contrasts are most obvious when using the name Unity Atom. The other amplifiers do other things probably a little bit better than the name, but this is not an amplifier review. I'm just saying that there are other qualities to be had from other amps, but I really loved the name Unity Atom with these loudspeakers because they really increase the loudspeaker's ability to, yeah, basically give us dynamic bombast. But that bombast is not as overt or as obvious as it is with the Klipsch Forte 4. And I have a pair of those here as well. Now the Klipsch are known for dynamics, that's their, their I guess their calling card, that's why people are drawn to them. No, the Mission 770 really can't match the Klipsch on Dynamics. It's not a big shortfall, but there is a noticeable difference there. And if that sounds like I'm grumbling, I'm not. Not at all. Because the Mission 770 are a rare beast in that they are exciting and smooth with Lou Reed's New York and with Booker Shade's movements. And they are expressive, expansive, and reasonably detailed with the Blue Nile's hats and Dark Side's psychic. And just the other day, I was playing Hail to the Thief by Radiohead, and I just noticed how much clarity the 770 bring to Tom York's vocal, and also some of the guitar sounds that sort of squall through the middle of this album. And that got me thinking, maybe I should rank Radiohead's albums worst to best with no explanations. So number nine, Pablo Honey. Number eight, A Moonshaped Pool. Number seven, A King of Limbs. Number six, Amnesiac. Yeah, spicy, right? Number five, In Rainbows. Number four, Hail to the Thief. Number three, The Bends. Number two, OK Computer. And number one, predictably, Kid A.
back to the 770, I also noticed their almost spooky handling of mid-range separation on Thomas Fellman's Gute Luft album. And in Mission Hands, the first track, Alice Immer, which means everything always, is a truly, truly exceptional piece of electronic music. But don't let the electronic part put you off because this is not pounding techno. This is electronic music, which I think is quite unusual because it has a swing to it, almost like a jazzy swing. So some of you who might ordinarily turn your noses up at electronic music might like this album. Go give it a listen. One big question might be, do the Mission 770 require a subwoofer? Now Mission rate them as minus three dB down at 42 Hertz. So we don't really get the bottom octave. And I personally can live without that in this room because I get a little bit of room loading on the speakers here because it's only a six meter by five meter room. So for me, the bass was just absolutely perfect. But if somebody said to me, John, I definitely think that these speakers need a sub, I wouldn't argue. I guess it depends upon your tastes and your room. I haven't tried a sub because I just listen for weeks and weeks and weeks and not once did I think, oh, I really need to put the KEF or the SVS in here. No, not at all. Because I think a lot of the listener's satisfaction with the 770 comes from the way that the two drivers have been so beautifully integrated. Now, this doesn't mean that other speakers make the two drivers sound very separate, but here we get a sense of cohesion or coherence that I don't really get from many other speakers. Maybe the LS50 Meta, maybe, and I'm not saying that these sound like a, a coaxially, coincidentally aligned driver array. It's just that there's a togetherness to the sound of these loudspeakers that you don't hear very often. And that for me is one of the key reasons why I think the mission, a bit like the Apple AirPods Pro 2 that we covered a couple of weeks ago, to me are a real all-rounder of a loudspeaker. And that all-rounder type behavior, I think makes them a very good bet for somebody who doesn't really know what kind of sound they're after, right? Because people like me are always saying, you need to go out there, listen to a bunch of stuff and find out what kind of sound you like. But if you don't know, that's kind of hard, right? Now I think the Mission 770 ticked that box and ticked that box hard. To that end, I think if 100 people bought the 770 blind without hearing them first, I think only a handful would return them. And I can't say that about, say, the Klipsch Forte 4, which I think many people would find too forward sounding in their, yeah, their general sort of disposition. Because the Mission 770 are a little bit more laid back, a bit more relaxed and a bit more polite, basically. The Klipsch want to shout about what they've found. Whereas the Mission 770, to run with that analogy, they want to sit down and have a nice chat and a cup of tea. And that conviviality is a little bit like the Wilson Audio Tune Tot. But I think if you put 100 people in front of a pair of Wilson Audio Tune Tot, the majority would be asking, quite rightfully, where's the bass? The Mission 770 scale up everything that I like about the Tune Tots. They're effortlessly engaging and they look and sound much bigger and they're stronger on dynamics to boot. Furthermore, I have not once felt like swapping out these loudspeakers for another pair since I installed them a few weeks ago. Not once, and I've got some killer stuff waiting in the wings. But it's just sat there as I've just really savoured the sound of music, music, through these loudspeakers. But I've also watched TV with these loudspeakers, and they are fantastic with vocal clarity. So there's no issues here really with these, nor really with any other sort of stereo speaker, but these are exceptionally good in carving out the spaces around voices in, yeah, in movies and TV shows and YouTube videos as well. So for when I watch Casey on camera conspiracies, I can hear him perfectly say the Panasonic Pony of Hope or Tone. Then there's the vintage aesthetic of the 770, which pushes all of my visual buttons. I mean, for me, visually, these are pretty close to being the perfect loudspeaker. But more than anything else, the 770 have exposed all the other speakers mentioned in this video or seen in this video 
as more specialist models. They're all fantastic, but they all come with a qualifier. So the Klipsch 44, they're exciting as all hell, but they're colored and they obscure some detail. The Kaya S12 from Vivid Audio, they are amazingly detailed. We can hear so far into the recording, but they really do need a subwoofer. And the Wilson Audio TuneTot, they offer refinement and smoothness in spades, but they are crazy, crazy expensive. And for me, the Mission 770 come without any qualifier. Or rather, if that qualifier exists, I haven't yet found it. Yes, the 770 are expensive, but they're not made in China. They are made in Cambridgeshire in the UK. So that adds to the price, as Como explained in my podcast. Listen to that if you want to hear him talk about that. But yeah, it should be acknowledged that these are not affordable or super affordable loudspeakers. They are for high-end audio enthusiasts, discerning listeners with deeper pockets or greater priorities applied to their high-end audio enthusiasm, right? Because what we buy is a combination of our disposable income and how we choose to spend that disposable income. So I am going to try my best to find a way, hell or high water, to keep these loudspeakers around. I love them. I think they're absolutely fantastic. So if you thought this video was fantastic, then please give it a like down below. If you like my attitude towards high-end audio, this is very much high-end audio, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. I can only work with the speakers that I have in this video. So if you're wondering about comparisons to other speakers, I don't know other than what I feature in this video. And so that meant once again, prop, <laughs> the port that fire, mm. the front firing port has been flared at each end. So there's a tube like this and it flares out at each end. Each pair of 770 ships with a, each pair of 770 ships with its own bespoke, mm, fuck, what am I saying here? Each pair of 70, <laughs> can't even do this. Each pair of 70, mm. <laughs> fuck. And that got me thinking, maybe I should just do a top nine list of radio, and that got me thinking, maybe I should do a list of, oh God, how would I do this? And that got me thinking, maybe I should rank. A big question is, do we need a subwoofer? Mission rate, what Tony are we on today, Olaf? Uh, let me check. Uh, 2.8. Tony 2.8. Okay, yeah. Tony 2.8.